conservative force it is a force in which the work done in moving an object between two points is independent of the path taken uh, so that is 4.1 right uh, if we move to 4.2 the question is saying that let's name the conservative force in the diagram above right without even looking at the diagram I know that in our context, in our scope, we have only one conservative force, which is force of gravity or gravitational force. So the answer for 4.2 is a uh, force of gravity. Uh, that's the only uh, conservative force we talk about in our scope. Moving to 4.3, 4.3 is saying that let's take the work energy theorem in words. So we have a uh, work net. Uh, being equals to the change in ek and that in words uh, goes as follows the net work done on an object is equals to the object's change in kinetic energy so the net work done on an object is equals to the object's change in kinetic energy basically you're just explaining the formula right because it's easy to see from the formula that the net work done on an object is equals to the object objects change in kinetic energy 4.4 so 4.4 is in that the velocity of the block at point b is 6.92 meters per second so at this point we have uh, 6.92 meters per second right at point b and then uh, the question goes on to say that use energy principles only to calculate the frictional force that the block experiences and it moves from point A to point B. So when the question says, uh, let's use energy principles, there's two equations we can use. Uh, work net is equal to the change in EK and then work done by non-conservative forces is equal to the change in EK plus uh, the change in EP, the potential energy, right? So I'm going to go ahead and use uh, the second equation to answer our problem. And then you guys can use the first one uh, so that we can see if we end up at the same answer. So let me go ahead and do that, right? Uh, but then before I answer any question, I have to draw a free body diagram, right? So that I can see clearly what is going on. Uh, so if I go ahead and do that, uh, so the block is going down. Uh, as it is going down, we know that uh, this is the weight which we can resolve uh, to weight uh, parallel and weight uh, perpendicular, right? And then we have the normal force and we have uh, the frictional force, right? So if you look at um, the forces acting parallel to the surface we have the frictional uh, we have the frictional force and weight parallel right but then we know that force of gravity is conservative right so if i'm using the second equation which says that the work done by non-conservative forces then the only force i will consider is friction right uh, so if i go ahead and do that i'm gonna have uh, so I'm going to have frictional force multiplied by delta x multiplied by cos of theta, right? So that is supposed to be equals to uh, the change in EK plus the change in EP, right? Uh, so if we go ahead and compute that, we're going to get um, a half mvf squared minus a half mvi squared and then plus mgh final minus mgh initial right and if we go ahead and substitute uh, friction is what we're looking for so we're just going to have fr then and then multiply by delta x which is equals to eight meters right uh, the displacement of the object and then multiply by cos of 180 when you're calculating the work done by friction it will always be cos of 180 because it always acts um, 
in the opposite direction and then uh, that will be equals to a half the mass of uh, the object is 2 kgs and then velocity final it's here right we've talked about it 6.92 so we have 6.92 squared minus a half uh, the mass of the object which is 2 and then velocity initial which is 2 meters per second right uh, we square that and then we have plus uh, mgh final so the mass is uh, 2 kgs uh, and then g gravity is 9.8 and then the height final so now we have a problem we need the height in order to use that equation and we don't have we don't have it right so let's look here we need we need that side yeah we need the height uh, so what we have we have an angle and the hypotenuse right uh, so it's easy to see that uh, we can go ahead and say that uh, let me just do it here real quick sine of uh, theta is goes to the opposite which is our height right divided by uh, the hypotenuse so we're gonna have a uh, sine of 30 being equals to the height divided by 8 so the height is equals to 8 multiplied by sine of 30 which is equals to 4 so our height is equals to is equals to 4 right so let's go ahead and solve our problem so here we're gonna have um so the height final so we come in from a height of 4 right and then we go in here at b where the height is 0 so the height final is 0 and then height initial is the one that is equals to uh, that is equals to 4 right so we're gonna get uh, minus 8 uh, frictional force is equals to and then if you compute uh, the right hand side uh, you're gonna get minus 34.5136 and then uh, if we divide both sides by minus 8 so let's just go ahead and do that we're dividing both sides by minus 8 we're gonna get the frictional force being equals to 4.31 newtons so that is uh 4.4 right uh let's do 4.5 uh real quick so 4.5 the question is saying that uh, the coefficient of friction for the last horizontal stretch after point b is 0 0.35 so here here uh, we have a coefficient of 0 0.35 right and then the question says that let's calculate the distance uh, the block will travel before coming to a complete stop without using equations of motions so if it is coming to a complete stop uh, then we know fully well that uh, we have vf is equals to zero right uh, but then that's not all we have we also know that vi is equals to 6.92 meters per second for that part of the motion yeah it was initial it was a vf from the from point a to b but then from point b to a complete stop it is now vi right and then uh, what else do we have uh, we have the coefficient which is equals to 0 0.35 so let's go ahead and you know set up our equations and see what we can do here uh, so we can use um work net is equals to the change in ek and we are governed by the variables you have right if you have vf and vi you're most likely going to use this equation or that other one so we're not just choosing it in randomly we are guided by the variables we have so uh, now all we have to do is draw a free body diagram for the object uh, you're gonna see real quick that the only force acting is a uh, frictional force right because even though the weight is acting on a flat surface it does zero work we have the normal it always do uh, zero work so we're gonna have uh, the work net being the force done by friction multiplied by delta x multiplied by cos of theta being equals to f m v f squared minus a half m v i squared so frictional force the frictional force will be uh, the coefficient multiplied by the normal force we know that fully well right so the coefficient is zero point 
three five and the normal force is mass multiplied by gravity so that will be two multiplied by nine comma eight and then we have delta x and then uh, the angle uh, that we have there is obviously uh, cos of 180, right, for frictional force. And uh, that should be all it goes to. So I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to write it here. Uh, so that should all be goes to. I have uh, the mass is 2 kgs and velocity final, we know that it is zero if we come, if we go into a complete stop, right? And then minus a half a 2 kgs and then the initial velocity is 6.92 squared right so now all we need to do is just uh, solve the right hand side and look for look for what look for delta x right so if you do that you're gonna get um, minus 6.86 multiplied by delta x is a ghost uh the right hand side so let me just put it there in my calculator real quick and see uh what i get here so i'm getting uh minus 47.8864 and then it is easy to see that we're going to divide both sides by minus six point eight six all right and then if we do that we're gonna get uh, delta x being equals to six point nine eight uh meters